Every ultimate experience Ireland has to offer is always within reach with a 182 BMW. The ultimate bowl of chowder, seasoned with Atlantic salt air, the ultimate swim spot, even the ultimate scenic shortcut that happily takes way, way longer. Experience the ultimate with a 24-hour test drive from your local BMW retailer because owning your new BMW is always within reach. Visit bmw182.ie Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elations Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson. Shout out D on the track. Paint Music Media. Shout out DJ Lee Productions. And I'm Al Ken. But if you a game changer, get my Let's head go. Yeah, My grand on high, high. We ain't losing trout. I'ma ride till I die. I go hard in that lane. lane. My God is the aim. aim. Put me in, coach, coach. And watch me change the game. Cause I'm a game changer. 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 Allegiance to the past, ain't nothing left to give it that reverence that the father gets. So every day I work the sweat, can get a flesh and other rest. They say go hard or go home. I say just do whatever's best. It's evident I'm blessed and I work like it. Fight, fight like a Viking. Fight, fight like a lichen. The difference is I like it, so I shine like I'm lightning. So I'm going head to head with something death. Who you like it? <laughs> yeah. So it's time for coach to put me in. I'm strapping on my shoulder pad. Lacing up my cleats and then I'm gone with the wind Like I'm gone in 60 seconds You can't hold me, you can't check me Check the memo, check the message running through Like, like I'm bad as I'm trucking Whoever's standing in my way Ain't, ain't no way you gon' stop me You better run to let me in Cause I go hard even though they say no way that I could win Like I'm Brett Ford, I'ma ride this way my head is in
Hey, 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 I'm a game changer. I'm a game changer. God is good. God is good all the time. I'm telling you right now, it's the time, it's the season that you want to get connected. You want to make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have a good time here in the Logan Power Show nationwide, worldwide. We're making a difference 24-7. We make a difference in everyone's life as you listen us across the globe. So I know that everyone who's basically excited, I'm excited about the show. We have some dynamic guests that are coming here on the show today. So I want you all to be excited as well. I know that God is going to move and open some doors for us on today. But first, before we get started, let's go into prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence. Father, we thank you for your love and your support. Father, we know without you, we could do nothing. And Father, we thank you right now that people's lives are being changed who are calling and listening in this very split moment and on the replay. Father, I thank you right now that at this point in time, that the words will be spoken from our guests, that they're going to change people's lives. Father, right now, as I decrease, Holy Spirit, as I decrease, you will increase, you will change people's lives here on this call. People's lives will know more about you. And we will praise you and thank you. And I'll read the prayer say amen and amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we're at the 6 o'clock hour. Well, God is good. We're going to change some things up. I got with me a family. I know my brother for a long time, uh, served with him in the military. His wife, man, this family's doing some great things. I got with me on the phone, David and Melanie Cole. Claude, what's going on, family? Hey, hey what's going on, my how brother? are you? <laughs> doing good, doing good. So, ladies and gentlemen, this, this family has God on their life. Hey, I'm telling you, they've they gone to, to the glory path. So I'm excited for what they're doing, but I'm going I'm to let them talk. So, the Cold Claw family, I call it Cold Claw Slit Six, and we have their own show. I'm telling you, they family smile, they laugh, they giggle. They need to have their own broadcast because God's in life. So, family, tell me about who you are and uh, how you guys met and got together. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a very, very long story, but it's – um. It's all about God. Um, Melanie and I have known each other since we were seven. Um, my father retired from the Air Force in 1980, moved back home to Al- Alcalou, South Carolina. Melanie's father had moved his family down from New York a few years earlier uh, to Manning, South Carolina, both great, big, thriving metropolises <laughs> in uh, the world. But um, we went to school together. We were always friends throughout grade school. Uh, when I was about 12 years old, I realized girls were something special. And Melanie was the first girl I ever had a crush on. Uh, she was completely not interested. I was <laughs> absolutely in the friend box, and I stayed there for a long time, all the way through high school. We both went to USC, but our paths never crossed there. When we, when well, I failed out of school, Melanie graduated. Um, we ended up working in Atlanta at the same time, never crossed paths. We worked in Columbia at the same time, never crossed paths. I moved to Charlotte and bought a house in 2004, and she was buying a house in Columbia in 2004. Uh, and um, when we decorated those houses, we actually bought matching furniture, not knowing it. And we weren't in each other's lives at this time. We have uh, lamps that match. We have tables that match. The couch that sits in our living room right now, I was going to buy the exact same couch from the same collection. Uh, It's just God's fingerprints all over it. And when we were 37, Melanie looked me up on Facebook, and uh, we uh, went out a couple times, and I said, man, I'm still in the friend book. Oh, I missed a very important part. At one point, when I was about 13 or 14, God told me that we were going to be married one day. I didn't realize at the time that was the Holy Spirit talking to me. I thought that was my bright idea, but it was indeed the Holy Spirit. And now fast forward to age 37, we went out a few times. We were just friends. Then all of a sudden it clicked. We got married. Um, our first child, Gabriel, was, was stillborn at 36 weeks um, after a perfectly healthy pregnancy, no problems, not even high blood pressure. I mean, no problems at all with this pregnancy. And all of a sudden, just one day, uh, there was a placental abruption, which just means the placenta came loose from the uterus. And obviously, the baby can't survive that way. And um, so we went through a period of grieving. And we were looking for, no, we, it wasn't just grieving. I mean, our, our whole world crumbled down. Um, 
and we were looking for a uh, a Christian counselor. Couldn't find a Christian counselor, and um, through God's grace and our our pastor's help, we we were eventually able to kind of get through our our grief. I won't ever say get over it because you never get over losing a child, True. and um, put our lives back together. And ended up going into the ministry, answering a call to ministry. Both of us have had on our lives for a long, long time. But uh, we both feel that we are called to be Christian counselors. We want to help other people that have been in similar situations or going through other other crisis kind of situations. Um, I also have a special affinity, obviously, for, for uh, military veterans who are returning with, with issues. Um, as we all do, come back with some issues and uh, hidden wounds, so to speak. And so I want to work with, with that. And then uh, we both, when we were young, wanted to adopt. We both, when we were kids, both wanted, or young rather, we both wanted to have nine children in our lives. And that's another one of those God fingerprints because for, that's an arbitrary number why anybody would want nine kids and then you happen to get married to someone and that person also wanted nine kids their whole life. Um, yeah. And we both were open to adoption. And... Uh, after almost five years after Gabriel's death, it was like the Holy Spirit touched us and said, okay, enough sitting around. You guys wanted to adopt. I want you to adopt. Look how well I've blessed you. Give your love to, you know, somebody. And we went out and uh, put in an application for adoption. And um, about three, four three or four months later, we had these four beautiful children at our house. And <laughs> a year, uh, six months later, they were we finalized the adoption and they were ours, so they've been with us about two years now. Amen. Amen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever look on their Facebook page, their kids look just like them. When I look at Cole, I said, Man, you were moving fast, brother. I said, Man, you were moving quick. I said, You didn't let nobody know to call. Hey, brother, man, like a baby shower, you know, just just hit me up on the sale. You know, I'll come through. Went, give a little more core love. You really did. It went so fast, we didn't have chance. We didn't have a chance to really even catch our breath. Um, that in itself is a long, long, wonderful God story. Um, tell them, tell them about the 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 four twin, the twins. Everything. Uh, all man, I wish we had enough time to really give you our testimony. First of all, thank you so much for allowing us this time to share our testimony and. Um, Man, if guys, whoever's listening out there, if you don't believe in God, uh, call us. And, uh, you know, we don't always have to have miracles or, or see miracles in, in, in life to know that there is a God. You just walk outside and see the beautiful sun and the flowers and all of that, and that in itself are, are miracles. But, man, we have such a great God that he also manifests miracles in our lives. And um, all of this that we're talking about are, gosh, are things that didn't really have to happen. It's not a coincidence. They're just mm -hmm. things that, you know, God, I, I know even before Dave and I got together, I asked God to talk to me like I was a toddler, like a child, like, please mm -hmm. make it plain, Lord. Sometimes I don't understand. Break it down for me. Mm -hmm. And because our God loves us so much, he he did just that. And so, uh, there were so many God footprints over our lives when we did not think that he was there or listening. And, you know, five, ten years later when we look back, like, gosh, that was, you know, that was God. Little things like, um, man, it's so much, it's so much. A uh, year before we actually adopted four beautiful kids, mm -hmm. Um, they're all siblings. We were looking for a, a home, you know, just, you know, just the two of us. We were going to flip houses, and it was going to be our second income. We just, yeah, we just wanted something really small, and, you know, we can, you know, first house to flip. But God said, you know, I got other plans, and we arbitrarily picked a day. We arbitrarily picked a realtor. I'm telling you, we had, honestly, it was arbitrary. We didn't think about it. We didn't research it. It was all arbitrary, and this person, he showed us exactly what he what we wanted, but just out of the blue, the person that we just met that day, out of the blue, that person said, no, you know, I just want to show you one other house, and he showed it to us. And it also, I, I just have to show you this house. I don't know why, 
but I just feel I have to show you this house. And and he did. And um, we're not materialistic people, but it was way bigger. But the price was something that we could not, either one of us couldn't ignore. And yeah. long story short, it took us six months. And it doesn't take that long. We have wait, great wait, credit. Wait, before we even get to that, my, as soon as we pulled up in the driveway, my wife burst into tears before setting foot on the property. She said, this is how God blesses. This is our house. And she started crying. She said, this is our house. And I came in with the realtor and walked around, looked at the house. She didn't even walk in the house. She started pacing around the property praying. And she was claiming her house right then and right there. So this was her house before she walked inside of it. The Holy Spirit just told me that this is where we were supposed to go. And so we weren't looking for anything remotely this big. We had no idea that we were about to adopt children. None of that had happened yet. And it took us six months, and we don't have bad credit. We're, you know, we're pretty, <laughs> we're good on all of that. And um, God <laughs> just, uh, just through, you know, allowed challenges. He allowed challenges so that our faith could grow. And yeah. every time yeah. the ch- a challenge happened, you know, it, it felt like a weight. But then by the time the tenth challenge happened, we were just like, okay, Lord, what are you going to do now? What do you want us to do? Right. And what are you going to do? And it, and it, the challenges just disappear. It dissipated every time, just quicker and quicker and quicker. Oh. But it took us six months. Let me let me tell you. I'm sorry to interrupt, but let me tell you like some of the challenges we're talking about. For example, mm-hmm. when we went to, you know, everything was good to go. We had to get insurance. You have to get insurance before you can buy a house. So go to get the insurance, the insurance quotes for the house. And the guy had said, hey, we're good to go with everything as long as your insurance falls in about, you know, $900 to $1,000 a month. Come back with the quotes, $3,800, $4,200, uh, $3,700 for quotes because the rule had changed about fire departments. Fire department used to have to be five miles from your house as the crow flies in order for you to be counted as being carried by that fire department. Two weeks mm. prior, the rule had changed to make it five road miles. The closest fire department to our house is 5.2 miles away. Then on top wow. of that, they're building, they were building a fire substation literally on the corner of our, uh, of our subdivision. However, this was right after the floods a couple years ago, and it had, an aquifer underground had flooded, so they couldn't open it on time. So mm. that, that one is about 1,000 yards from here. But we couldn't count it because it wasn't open yet. So I had to, I called the fire chief, and long story short, this guy stroked a, a letter, and we sent it to the insurance company, and they did it. And so we got our insurance. And, y'all, the, the thing about wow. it is, the cool thing about that, we didn't know the fire chief. Right. We didn't know. We happened to be telling <laughs> someone at church our issue. Who does know the fire chief. Who does know the fire chief. <laughs> And they were like, oh, no problem. You need to talk to the fire chief. We were like, that's great, but we don't know him. He's like, I do. He hears his number. He hears his number. And then um, that was another God thing. Again, um, standing on faith. Six uh, wow. six months of issues just like that. I'm serious. It were all crazy, it just out of the ordinary issues. And every time wow. God, just as soon as they happened, they disappeared. Yep. And six months to the day, y'all, six months to the day, exactly. So September 11th, we put it off on the house. March 11th, six months to the day, March 11th, y'all, it closed. We thought that was really cool. We were like, that's a really cool thing, six months to the day. But let me show you how our guy works, okay? After that happened, we got settled in. Like, what are we going to do at this big house? We were like, gosh, there's only two of us. We got a dog and a cat. And then the Holy Spirit started speaking to me and saying, it's time to go ahead and put the application in. But you know how hard-headed we are, right? So we don't do everything that God tells us to do right when God tells us to do it. And I didn't. But you know what? God loves us, y'all. He loves us so much that he knew that that was going to happen. So by the second or third time, he finally urged me to do it, I did. And four months, y'all, four months later, so every, usually with adoption, you talk to just about anybody else, and they told us this. You know, if you want a a toddler or something along those lines, it should take about a year or something. We were settling in for that year, so let's go ahead and get our application in. And and David corrected me. It was three months. Um, Our children was actually, they were actually in our home. And guess when they were in our home? September 11th, a year to the day that we put an offer on this big house that we did not know 
what we were going to do with it when it was just the two of us. But now we knew mm. we had four others to welcome in. So a year to the day, but because of the state that they actually were born in, it takes six months before the adoption can be final. Did you hear me? Six months. So six mm. months to the day, the adoption was final, just like six months to the day our offer in our home was the offer in our home was accepted and we closed. The also wow. the big significance of that, people will talk about Facebook, but you know, Facebook has some significance in my life because I love when they show like the history and what you did a year ago or five years ago on that same day. So this year, when March 11th rolled around, actually March 10th, um, guess well, March 11th was a Saturday. So we actually finalized the adoption on a Friday. Right. So when that day rolled around again, guess what happened during that day five years ago? We actually took maternity pictures. So it was God wow. again. Again, we arbitrarily picked a day to take adoption. I mean, excuse me, um, maternity photos. And mm. Gabriel obviously ended up passing and leaving us. But still yet, even then, God was orchestrating all of that so that that day will have a significance. We took maternity pictures. We closed on a house and adoption came final on the children that we have now. Praise the Lord. I mean, my big takeaway of all of this is he'll do it for us. He'll do it for you. If you're not sure, if you (laughs) want to hear from God, just ask him, just ask him and start expecting, start thinking. Don't ask him every day. Start praising him every day and saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you for showing me. Thank you for talking to me. Uh, Thank you for making this plain. Thank you for building a relation. Whatever it is, ask him. It's biblical. The scripture says that. And also, when when God puts something in your heart, because God told us, you know, like I said, he told me when I was 13 years old that I was going to marry Melanie, and I didn't know, again, that that was the Holy Spirit. And I obviously wasn't in my walk with Christ where I am today. Um, but he also told us that we were going to be parents. So we knew that. So we started praising him after we lost Gabriel. We said, Lord, you know, of course we went through a period we were asking God to do it our way. God, let us get pregnant. God, let us have a baby. God, let us this. God, we want a child now. We want a child by this date. You know, we went through that. But eventually we did realize, you know, it's not our will. It's not our timing. It's God's will. And and I promise you, that, and I've posted this on Facebook before that you never, God may not answer your prayer when you want it, but he is never, he is never late. You will always have it. And everything has fallen into place in such a way that our life is, is so wonderful today. And I have, I have even a better appreciation of like the story of Job. I always wondered, you know, I said, how in the world could Job lose all these things and go through all this and lose his children, but then be restored greater than what he had going into it. And I couldn't understand that. Well, I promise you, lose a child and then open your heart to something like adoption and see God work through all that and see how our, our testimony and, and see how people watching us lose Gabriel and come to Christ through that and watching how God has worked, all, worked that horrible, horrible thing into something so wonderful yeah. and so beautiful. Yeah. We love our kids. We, you know, we're, I can't imagine life without these four little knuckleheads running around here, but <laughs> it's just that, that you can't, you, you know. How we, if, if Gabriel didn't pass, I'm not sure if the four of them would be with right. us. That's just how, you know, wow. we might have, you know, took another course or, or something along those lines. We probably would have adopted. Yeah, we would have adopted, but it might not have been those four. And those four were supposed to be with us, and that's what God ordained. So the mm. takeaway there for me was always, I miss my child. But if we believe what we say we believe, we'll see him again. Mm. And he got a chance wow. to live out his purpose. His yeah. purpose was to bring us together with those four kids. That You know, a lot of us walk around this earth all of our lives and never actually achieve our purpose. My child mm. didn't breathe one breath and achieved exactly what it was that God wanted him to do. And not only that, he his other purpose was to bring David and I closer together and and ultimately mm-hmm. us closer to get to, to, to God. And he achieved mm-hmm. all of that without taking one, one breath. breath. How could you be mad at that? Trust me as a mom, 
you know, I still cry. I still grieve, Gabriel. I still am sad. But then I remember that we aren't here for ourselves. We aren't. We are here to glorify God. We here, we're here to fulfill a purpose. And um, my baby was able to do that. And I'm very proud mm. that he was able to do that. And he's changed my life, and I'm so thankful to him for that. Amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever – I've known David Colclaw since 2003, going to – I remember I joined, I joined the Marine Corps, went to boot camp, and I finally got to the eighth. I remember I met him, um, intelligent guy, um, taught me a lot. You know, was one of my biggest mentors. So I definitely want to give love to my brother. He taught me a lot. Cause he always, oh, he always, he always let me know that to always, you know, this, this military is one thing, Cal, but you know, you look past this thing. You know, he always said the rank don't mean nothing. You know, this guy's sergeant such and such, that sergeant such and such, but he don't have stuff I know. And he was always man, just know your craft, know your stuff. I used to watch him. And you know, he said, man, I'm about to get out. You know, I'm going to do my thing. Like, man, you sure you ain't doing that? I ain't retiring, man. I know what I'm going to do. All right, cool, man. Bet. I'm going to watch. You know, I'm going to watch. And literally, I've literally seen him elevate. And the way he talks now, probably totally different than what he talked beforehand. You can see how Thank God's you. really elevated him in a positive way. And that's, that's for you. knowing him. That's for yeah. knowing him. And it's for this person mm-hmm. I've known. I can honestly say the way he's talking now, 15 years ago, David would never say something like this. But I know Cold mm-hmm. Claw because he's been real people. And I've always said, man, I said, man, because I didn't know about adoption. I thought my man been getting busy with him and his wife. I said, man, it's just <laughs> like, said, he beat me. I said, bro, you can have four. I'm still rocking the three. Thank you, Jesus. But you got four. You got me beat, brother. So I said, I'm still trying to, trying to catch it to the three. You got four. I said, God bless, man. But he's been always a very humble person. I know he married the right woman. Thank you. I know that. I know that. For instance, um, he's come through a lot. He's never, never. I would say never, ever um, been the kind of person to put his uh, business out there like that. So a lot of things that you may see him posting, putting stuff out there. In regards to that, that's really not him. I'm gonna be honest. When he posted about what he went through, I mean, that's not, that was not him. But the train, family, um, I've always said, you know, God's hand is on. They look, their kids look like them. I'm gonna be honest. They look. I like. Well, you know, that that look like Dave a little bit. That's Dave right there. That's Dave for real. That's Dave. Is, that, the little one. I said the little one on top of the show. That's Dave for real. That's Dave right there. I know. I know my boy. But I really can say God has his hand on y'all. Um, I really want to tell you this from the bottom of my heart. The Lord said me, you guys got a book. I know it's there. I know it's in the writing. There's a book that's going to help souls. I know you guys are pastors um, at your church, and you got a pastoral spirit, and you're going to help people with your foundation. Um, there's more to come. There's more right. people that you're going to help. I, I, truly, I, I know this in my spirit. Um, I told you, said, I'm ready to do the show. Cold Claw Slit 6, you know, we need to put this on. But I know you guys are, you know, you want to protect your kids. So I totally get it. It's like I protect mine. But when the time comes, I'm always willing to do it because we need to see believers on a whole other level that people yeah. don't see. Like people can say, well, you know, well, I get it. You talk about the Bible. But these people live in the Bible. They can tell yeah. you what it's like not to have nothing, lose something, and pick it back up. I know Amen. when I lost my second child, how I felt. So I know what you're going through. But my, my two sons came after my second child that passed away because God had showed me when I was, when I was pregnant with my, my eldest son, Jeremiah. And, I, and they said that your son's going to be retarded, going to be dumb, you know, he may die. And there were two kids playing in the office, and God said you had a board. But if I listened, God said, I'm going to get double because mm. he trusted me and didn't complain about Amen. the situation. So when Amen. I know you lost Gabriel, and I know what you went through because you're the kind of guy and you're the kind of family that wants, wants to be parents. 
See, there's some people that don't appreciate being a parent. And there's yeah. some people that can say, you know what, the difference between it being a dad and a father, the difference between being um, a mom and a mother. I can honestly say you guys are actually a mother and a father because you can tell the difference. It's not just like Thank the pictures you. you post. It's just your spirit speaks to it. Like when your sons come to, hey, I'm talking to my father right now. So we don't have an understanding. You know, father, hey, I tripped up, scraped my knee. Okay, talk to me about it. What we got to do? Well, son, you got you know, you to gotta pray about it. You heal. Let's move forward. Band-Aid. You know, girls, I'm coming to my mother, not just my mom, my mother. Because when your kids get older, they're going to remember every all your great-grandkids that you're going to get from God's going to bless you. They're going to call you grandparents. And your kids, Amen. that is your mom and dad. Amen. I don't care. If that's your father. That's your mother. I don't. That's who you, that's your bloodline. Because God's going Amen. to bless you. And I don't care what anybody says. You all have a foundation that nobody can break. And your marriage is going to be great. Um, I believe that God has some more doors about to open, but that book is going to bless some people. When you're ready to show <laughs> more of your household, the show, like I said, I know my man Cole Cross is telling you, it's better than most of the other people of your show. The Cole Cross is <laughs> got to tell you how he, he's going to tell you this is how you get down, how you dance, this is how you take the kids out. He's a knucklehead. You know what I'm saying? He's a knucklehead. He's a knucklehead. One, two, three, and four. But anyway, <laughs> um, I just want to tell you. Um, God is going to truly bless you. I thank y'all for coming in on today. We didn't have to. Uh, and for y'all who don't know, my boy David is very, very time oriented. So I said, man, you got to come around this time or, or you know, okay, I'm busy on that day. What are you talking about, man? I'm busy on that day. What are you talking about? Got something going on. Man, I'm going to call you up myself. Like, hey, hey, this this is Cal. This is Cal. You know what I'm saying? I was with your husband in the Marine Corps. Hey, but hook that up. Can I? No, man, you got to get this day. All right, cool. Can you make this day day? All right, cool, man. Text it, email. Can I get the stuff? Oh, man, Cal, remember, thank you so much. Because he, he's time-oriented, y'all. So that's when we start on time. We we, we get it on time. He's going he gonna to catch me now. Tell me, that's my man. That's customer <laughs> service, one-on-one. That's my love of God. That's my brother. But how can people get in contact with you if they want to, you know, inbox you, um, just want to, you know, Fellowship would know more about the cold calls. How can they people get in contact with you? Well, actually, um, a good email to use would be Rev D. Coakley. It's uh, C O L C L O U G H at gmail.com. Just R E V D C O L C L O U G H at gmail.com. That would be a great way to, um, to, to email us. Um, we'd be happy to, to talk. If they need someone to, you know, whatever. I mean, if you're thinking about adoption, yeah. if you lost a child, we we definitely have and will continue to um, minister to, uh, listen to whatever is needed. That's our calling. Yeah, that's our calling. That's why we go through things in life, so that we can be. When we come out on the other side strong, we can't just keep walking. We got to turn around and make sure the next person that has to endure that for a reason. Um, make sure they get through it so they can get to the other side. Amen. You know, Amen. Uh, the Holy Spirit yes. just reminded me of something. The night that we lost Gabriel, the Holy Spirit told me, "You're not going through this for nothing. Amen. You're going to you're going mm. to testify to others." And I, I, that was uh, my goodness, March 2012. So we're talking seven and a half years or five and a half years. Maybe this is 18, whatever. We're talking six <laughs> years that I hadn't had that thought just now when you said that. And that has been what we've tried to do is that we, you know, the first thing I said to Melanie after, you know, we saw that the that the baby didn't have a heartbeat, I said, look, we, we can either let this tear us apart or we, <clears throat> we can use this to make us stronger. And let's vow right here and right now to make us stronger. And that's what we've tried to do from that horrible night until now. And, I mean, we we love to share our story, and uh, we've only scratched the tip of the iceberg with all the details of it, but um, <laughs> we love to share our story, and we love to help people. So, please, if you if you have any questions or, or you want to share something, please do reach out to us, and I'll be happy to, to, to give out my number and, and call. Amen. Now, like I said, the reason why we, we give email to the co-close, this is my family, y'all. I've got to protect them. We, 
He mentioned email. The man got to check you out first. Got to get some things together. Got to make sure you talk to the Holy Spirit. Before you pass out the number, y'all. So that's why we do email. Email's a good thing. Email you to check it out. Make sure it ain't spam or something. So so definitely, um, again, on the replay, the information is available. If you need to contact, you can email us to loganpowershow at gmail.com. We will pass along the email address, not the number only email address. The man and woman of God have just told you. You email them, pay them. Pray about it. If they're, they're pretty much ministered to you. Um, they are a blessing. Trust and believe. They have a testimony. We haven't touched the tip of the iceberg. They are correct. Um, but we know <laughs> for time base, that's why we're getting them live in person. Because I got to get them in September so we can cry in the spirit. If you meet my, that way he can yeah. clown me a little bit to my wife. <laughs> and I can clown him a little bit to his wife. Because, you know, we Marine Corps brothers, you know, we got we go we go back. Uh-huh. You know, you know me before I got married. So, you know, you know that I was <laughs> still short, still trying to get myself together. You know, and he was always a smart one. Tall. So always like, smart like like me. Yeah. I remember you fell asleep <laughs> all the time. Yeah, you know, I fell asleep, I was tired, man. All that night, like you know, that's the cow. Mm-hmm. Hey, you know, you know me, tired. I was tired. I ain't gonna front. I was tired. There's times, you know, being like you know, radio field operator and get like three, four hours of sleep and they get mad at the cat nap. I'm tired, sir. I'm tired. You hear me? I'm tired. I'm in <laughs> serving and I'm tired. Okay? So I, I didn't I didn't get the love like him. Well he got a full eight because you know he's been longer than me. Oh, please. So got, <laughs> I was a mechanic. I never had eight hours of sleep. <laughs> I know that. Oh, oh, that's that's why the joke out. <laughs> <laughs> One other Amen. thing in some in September, that's probably was divinely or, um, ordered also because y'all can help us celebrate the children's second year with us. That's that's, right. that's Gotcha Day, um, the, the second year of Gotcha Day. So we'll be celebrating in September two years with uh, our four babies. Amen. Well, hey, there are four babies, the cold cloth sick, ladies and gentlemen, live at the Logan Power Show. Uh, I encourage you all to continue to follow them. On social media, um, you know, just pretty much they got some photos out there, friend requests. They're going to definitely scan you out, but definitely see what the, the public post you look at. Look at the public post. Hey, my, they got a test coming. They're going to walk out. But, hey, we appreciate your family. You all can continue listening on. But, I, hey, I look forward to seeing you all in the next two months. Again, yeah. shout out to the yeah. Coakley Six. Love Thank them. you so much David for having us. Coco. God bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you, All brother. right. Hey, Tom, brother. We love you, mate. <laughs> love you, right, man. Well, yes, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you just heard the Cold Claw 6 live, live here at the Logan Power Show. Now we're going to our next phase. This man is on a mission to change lives. He's on a mission to change, has the answer to America's problem, can fix the streets. He's one, Mr. Emmanuel Arbery. What's going on, sir? How you doing, sir? How you, thanks for having me on your show. Oh, thank you for coming in live here at the Logan Power Show. We want to go back and go to you, sir. Your, the floor is yours. You're going to talk about your books. That depth is available on Amazon.com. And also talk about your answer to fix the problems that's in America. Okay, are you ready for me to go and do that? Yes, sir. Okay, well, basically, um, my answer uh, to help is not geared toward America per se, but it's geared toward helping improve um, black America, first and foremost, because I am a black American, and um, my uh, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave me a positive vision on how to uh, first deal with uh, eradicating urban violence here in the city of Chicago to make Chicago a model first before we expand to, um, I would say, 10 other cities uh, throughout the Midwest. And even if it goes further than that, that's cool. But my goal right now is just trying to get it started here in my city. Uh, unfortunately, um, in the black community, uh, the main hindrance that um, I would say that's given me uh, a lot of problems and lack of support is this Willie Lynch mentality within the black culture. So I would say um, after, I'm going to go there, after 15 years of, you know, reaching out to brothers and sisters, 
you know, in my city, as well as, you know, online, I decided to uh, do what my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told me to do, and that was write the vision and make it plain. And that's what I did in my um, revised book. It's called The Solution for Black America, Reclaiming, Rebuilding, and Restoring the Urban Ghettos in America, second edition, available on Amazon.com. I'm asking every Christian in the United States to please read my story because I don't ask for any donations. But I'm trying to generate capital so that way I can hire 30 qualified people that meet the criteria that I'm looking for to help me um, do all the things which I have written in that book um, to bring it to pass because I'm just uh, I'm just one man with a with a plan and a vision, and it takes a team to make a dream work. And again, our Amen. focus is on eradicating urban violence in the city of Chicago right now, and make Got Chicago it. a model Amen. first before we expand to ten up or fifteen other cities. Got it. Amen. But Amen. I do want to say, so you might, some of your listeners might say, well, you know, what are your um, solutions? I I don't have enough time to go into all of that. One of the reasons why I wrote the book is because I wrote it, I put all that information in the book, and that's what I'm selling. I'm selling that vision, the idea, so I can generate that capital and carry out, you know, all that stuff, what I wrote in the book to the fullest. But anyway, I'm going to give your listeners five main, five components that um, I talk about in the book, and that's going to make my um, Christian organization effective and successful in the city of Chicago first. Okay. Um, the five components are a social service component, a spiritual mm-hmm. component, which is going to be optional for secular people, because we do want to bring in secular people to be part of this as well. Um, even though this is a Christian organization, but that's how we're going to try to win souls over to the kingdom too. We have to bring in secular people and try to win them over to the Lord, do the best that we can. Again, that's an individual thing. Um, if a person wants to be saved, but we, we would like to show them love, compassion, all the same things that Jesus Christ did, you know, when he was here on earth. So um, social service component, a spiritual component, we're going to have also yeah. our own independent political party. Okay. And... Um, an entrepreneur component, and an entertainment component. So all of those things are going to be within this organization I'm trying to start, which is going to be called the Grassroots Community Activist Institute of Chicago. Right now, it, um, my organization only exists online, and so I call it the Grassroots Community Activist Movement. And I've been online for over 15 years but my thing is, I'm online not to just be online just to be seen. I'm trying to recruit brave and smart people that's going to work with me to help me turn this organization into reality rather than just sitting back and complaining about the issues. Uh, a lot of brothers and sisters I run across, all they want to do is complain about the white man. Uh, they complain about Jews owning the media and all this and that. And I say, hey, look. I'm focusing on trying to rebuild Black Wall Street in my Christian business. But I, where's my uh, black builders? Got it. Got it. Okay, well, you got five strong components. Now, regards to you talked about an independent actual party. Now, yes, sir, independent, independent political party. party. Was, independent political party. That's a, powerful, that's a powerful thing. So pretty much we're going to have believers coming right through that political party. Um, that's talk right. About, that's right. But the main yes, thing so right now, about, I'm just saying, the hardest part is just trying to, you know, find, you know, brave people to work, get on my team. And also, I just want to say this too, you know, before um, our time is uh, expired, I'm in the process of turning my story into a major film, and I would like for you to be a part of that film if you're, you know, interested and able. The name of my film is called Hood Liberator. Made in Chicago, and it's based on my revised on my revised book that I just mentioned, the Solution for Black America. So okay. everything I'm saying is I'm in con, I'm, I'm consistent. You know, there's no 
uh, contradictions. I'm not trying to flip flop, you know, trying to, you know, um, uh, please people, compromise. I'm staying focused. That's why I don't have a lot of support. You know, a lot of people are just saying, oh, you know, keep up the good work, but they're not working with me. So, you know, I'm not going to beg anybody to work with me. You know, I'm going to just be, um, I, I'm using the online um, internet as a way to uh, advertise as well as to encourage my group members to, you know, mm-hmm. do their part. Because, again, it takes a team to make a dream work. Got it. Not a problem. So based off our listeners who listen to you right now, do you need people to either to purchase your book to help you with your mission forward or need well, to hold, hold on into your mission? I, what I want, I want people that's going to be sincere because anybody can buy a book. So I'm just seeing the ones that's really want to know about uh, the plan. I, I recommend that they read the whole book. Don't just, you know, read some of it or – you know, just buy the book. I'm I'm encouraging readers, so that way we don't have Got to it. waste time trying to constantly explain stuff that's already in writing. Got it. I understand. And we're going to carry now, out that stuff to the fullest. But also, I want to mention too, um, it's not just going to be limited here to the United States. My vision also um, expands um, throughout the African diaspora. Once I get it um, established here in the city of Chicago, I'm going to reach out to. Um, African immigrants here within mm-hmm. the United States that's in agreement, you know, with uh, the vision that the Lord has given me to help me um, mm-hmm. expand to 10 countries in Africa. Ten and we're going to do the replicate, um, replicate the same thing. But something else I do want to mention so that way your um, listeners don't get confused. In this type of mm-hmm. business, it's going to be both a nonprofit as well as a for-profit business. So that way we don't have to just sit up and uh, be like, um, I would say, other black organizations, other um, spiritual or Christian organizations, you know, just depending on donations. We want to bring in talent, have people that have the talent and skills, so that way we could create our own films, plays, Mm -hmm. and um, create legitimate jobs in those high-crime, gang, and drug-infested communities that's overlooked that's how you eradicate a lot of this urban violence, and that's what we're going to do. Starting on the west side of Chicago, we're going to cover Austin, Garfield Park, and North Lundell. Once we um, see a reduction of violence there, then we're going to expand to the south side of Chicago and make our presence known over there. And that's why I was saying to, you know, I would like for us to make Chicago a model first because right now Chicago is, you know, it's, it's really a shame. A lot of people are slaughtered here since 2001. Over uh, 4,000 people has been killed in the city of Chicago alone, and that's unacceptable mm-hmm. Unacceptable to me as a Christian. Absolutely. Death is, death is unacceptable. Now, regards to being a nonprofit, do you need the help to get the nonprofit started in regards well, to – Well, I just want to say this as well. I have both mm-hmm. my business plan – tight and ready to go you know i have um for my nonprofit, i have my articles of incorporations type my bylaws type as well as for my um for-profit my um articles of organizations type so i just need you know the manpower behind that i get it i I get i get you need the, the manpower I totally get that part. You know, manpower is one thing, but there's also another side to it also as well. And what I'm going to do for you right now, hold for me one second. See no problem. Here. But the main thing, too, I just want to make sure I have legitimate people. So everyone that's going to, you know, that's – I'm only looking for 30 people within the United States. But what I'm saying is I want to make sure we uh, screen those people, make sure that, you know – they don't have, you know, those criminal back. We're gonna do those criminal background checks because I, I'm not gonna um, put, um, I would say, pedophiles, you know, on my uh, management team. That's not happening. I got it. Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, and, and I don't want hard criminals and in that neither. You know, you know, we want law buying honest people so that way we could be an, an example. That's how come I hate to say this, but that's why the church. Um, the black, especially the black churches, like failing right now because they're 
you know, copying off of the world and they're just letting everybody come in and take over and it's just not really being effective. And that's how come, you know, we're losing in that area because there's no real standards like it used to be, you know, when our grandparents was, um, you know, running things. I hear you. I mean, we get that definitely with what you're saying. So what we can do is um, I just, for instance, um, people will get behind you. I believe that. I believe that it's going to take all she declaring to create what needs to be done. So how can people get in contact with you? With me, it's not um, – I would say uh, – just put in my first and last name on Facebook. That's Emmanuel Barbie, E-M-M-A-N-U-E-L. Last name is B-A-R-B-E-E. Also, I would recommend that they would send me their uh, email address so that way I can email them all of my information where they can have access to my um, to my book online. They can also join my virtual um, organization that's online. But the goal is for me is to move my uh, Christian organization from behind this computer and start it in the city of Chicago. And because the, the community, that's, you know, they're the ones that really need our support. And so I'm mm-hmm. not trying to coward and hide, hide behind a, um, a computer. I just want to okay. make sure that uh, when I do this that um, I'm not going to be half-stepping, that I'm going to have people that's qualified, that's going to be on my team, that's going to, um, work with me and believe in the vision, you know? I got it. I do want to mention a couple other things, if you don't mind, before our time is out. Sure. Um, we're going to offer a second chance program in time, and that's geared toward um, ex-offenders for nonviolent crime, so that way to give them an opportunity to um, contribute back to society and stuff like that so that they don't become... A, re- um, a repeated um, offender. Um, also, we are open to, um, I would say, former gang members if they're truly remorseful and they're not um, tied up with uh, the, the drug gang or uh, being in gangs and selling drugs and all that stuff. If they're completely um, turned around, we'll give them a chance because that's what um, Christianity is all about and. Cr- you know, giving people second chances. God gave us a second chance. You know, we was lost in the beginning. So that's what one, one thing that we want to do in this type of organization. And um, last thing I do want to mention, though, too, is that this is a Christian socialist organization, and it's not geared toward the way some people may think that, well, you know, when you use the word um, socialist, you know, you want government handouts. That's not what I'm uh, advocating for. The socialist mm-hmm. part will be geared toward our businesses. We we want to make okay. sure that we um, be able to compete um, with the non with our for profits, so that way we can fund our non profits rather than asking for handouts from the government and all that stuff. Got it. Now, one yeah. thing I want to ask, and a lot of people want to ask this as well. You said you want I want to get from behind the computer onto the actual onto the streets. What in Chicago? Is definitely, you know, area I'm definitely familiar with. Are there any programs, any people that that have got a chance to read your book and say, you know, hey, I'll connect with you, or anybody you know, any kind of a, a church that can, you know, that's a, a good start there, or anybody like friends or family that would like to connect with you and start from where you currently are at this point in time. Has anyone said, hey, I'm gonna reach out, I'm gonna help you to take your vision and run with it? No, sir. And that's the honest God truth. And the reason why is because they, um, again, this is about that um, Willie Lynch mentality. And that's what I talk about. Mm -hmm. What makes this organization different than, I would say, the current organizations that's out there is this is based on my personal experience. So a lot of, um, I would say, our people, black people, Mm -hmm. you know, they they want me to do all the work and all that stuff, but once me and uh, I do have someone that's working with me, that's my business partner. Mm-hmm. Her name is Sister Renee. Yeah. Um, the okay. Lord um, allowed her to uh, purchase my first book. She was impressed, mm-hmm. and she traveled all the way from uh, Wisconsin just to come to Chicago to work with me to pass mm-hmm. out my book flyer, you know, for my revised book. And I was impressed sure. with that. 
But what I'm saying is that um, people, they, they want to wait until, I guess, once me and Sister Renee start making money, then that's when they're going to want to come out the woodwork. So, again, you know, mm-hmm. That's why I'm looking beyond, you know, Chicago. I'm looking. I'm trying to recruit 30 people, so it doesn't have to. Uh, I don't have to limit myself to people in the city of Chicago. I'm looking for 30 people within the United States. So that's that's where I talk about in the book, and that's, you know, kind of like um, my way of like trying to advertise it through the print. Well, this is something I'm gonna give to you, sir. Is some wisdom the Lord wants to pass on to you that's gonna help you. I would, for, for instance, if I were you, is I would look in where I am, what's around me, and make an impact right then and there. A lot of times um, your vision is is beyond Chicago, beyond the United States on a global scale. But to be very effective, you got to be effective of where you currently are. And what I mean I by that is... And I, tr- I tr- truly agree with that part. But mm-hmm. if... Um, I don't have the resources if I don't have, um, you know, support from from the community. I mean, I can't even do my job. So instead of me – oh, oh, hold on, please. Thank you, Lord. I, I forgot to mention this part too, uh, and this, very, this is very important. Nehemiah, sure. you know, he had that vision. God gave him the vision to build the wall of Jerusalem. Now, he didn't build that wall by himself. He had um, qualified people – bricklayers, um, architects, engineers. He had those type of people in place to help him do that. So that's basically what I'm trying to do with this type of business. I got it online. People know my story. I mean, I don't have to constantly sit up here and constantly have to keep telling people who I am. I got it written in my revised book. I, you know, I, I told I'm on 300 you, I told, social I told networks. I correspond with 100, 125,000 people worldwide. So I'm ready to make this happen, and I'm in the process of turning my story into a film. I'm currently in film school, so I'm doing all the stuff that I can and using the resource, the um, limited resources that I have. You know what I'm saying? I get it. I get it what you're saying, but I'm beginning with the Lord telling me it's going to help you. What you're talking about is resources. If you, resources well, I know is good. almost, but what Resor- I'm talking about right now is a team. I'm talking about having people to work with me and Sister Renee because it's just me and her. I, I, I get that what you're saying, Mr. Barbie. What I'm saying is right now at this point, for you move for you and Sister Renee, the Bible talks about if one prays, one prays to flight, the two if like angels go to flight. So God fights for you. So my thing about it is if the Lord is with you like, like we know he is, then he'll give you the right direction when you need to be done. So your thing is, is that it's always declaring decreeing what you want to have happen. So I declare and decree that the people will come into your life, but you have to be strategic in what's being told. My thing about it is you don't – the thing about it is say resources is one thing and people coming to you, but that's not going to be always the case. If Jesus depended on – in his life, if he depended on saying, well, I've been given this, doing that, but he didn't go out then he wouldn't have made it to the next level. Three years, three and three and a half years, he traveled. So my thing about it is I'm not telling you to travel. I'm saying be impactful where you are. You and Sister Renee is an impact right now. You got another hand. So you got you got four hands instead of just two. So I'm telling you right now, this week, I promise you, if you put your foot in regards of let the Lord lead you where you need to direct yourself in the city of Chicago, then you can make an impact like no other. Because people are right now, I'm going to be honest with you, the truth is, I'm going to tell you right now, people are not reading anymore. I know that. They're not They're not reading. So you're going to have to speak your book and live your book. It's a different ballgame. So one thing of knowing the Bible, but living the Bible is a whole brand new ballgame. So you got to live this thing. If you are sold out to what you believe in, then you know what? Live it, and I guarantee you God's going to change your life this week, but it's up to you and what you want to do. Social media networks, you can be on 5,000, but I'm telling you right now, that's not how you're going to get your mission next level. To make an impact in the city of Chicago, it's going to require boots on the ground for the two that you have. That's it. That's your startup. You don't need to do social media is one thing, but you're not going to really attack the people just by 
I got social media. Go read my book. Now everybody's going to do that. I promise you it's not going to be the case. And, and even, even when talking about doing a film, you still got to present your presentation to the people because when you talk about a producer who's going to give you your money, they may say, well, I don't, I'm not going to read your book. You got to sell me the pitch on why should I give you my money? Because sometimes in a lot of cases, people don't always read it. They'll go by what your presence is. The favor of God is what you need. Amen. But, but I do want to mention this part too. That's why I am in film school and I am going to learn about being a producer and a director. So, that way, yeah, you, I don't have you, to worry you know about that. paying someone to do that part. But I feel, I yeah, that, I do need you, those you, actors. You need the actors. You need the equipment as well. You can and I can get that from my film there. school. I get that. But my thing about it is I'm telling you what's going to help you to the next level. Make an impact in film school. Trust and believe you'll get there. Tell people how can you get in contact with Mr. Emanuel. How can they contact you, sir? Again, they can con- contact me on Facebook. Just send me a friend request. My full name is Emmanuel Barbie. That's E M M A N U E L. Last name is B A R B E E. And also include your email address so that way I can connect with you and send you, uh, email you all my uh, information. Also, if people want to meet me in person, uh, they can make arrangements with me through email or on Facebook. And I can meet with them uh, in person at Hare Washington Library downtown. Got it. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again, Mr. Emmanuel, for coming on. We appreciate you, sir. We claim the best for you, okay? Thank you, sir. Hey, sir, before we before you end, I, I'm still interested in trying to uh, have you to work with me in terms of turning this thing into a film. Yes, sir. We, we'll definitely get back in contact with you regarding that. And I said, I tell you again, keep pressing, keep moving. God's going to make a way. I promise you on that, okay? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, sir, Mr. Manuel Barbie live here at the Love and Power Show. Our final guest, um, she is doing some great things in the Chicago area. She's doing some great things across, has her own two offices. She's bringing back return guest, Miss Natalie. Are you on the line, ma'am? Yes, I am. Hello. How you doing? How's everything? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me back. Yes, ma'am. It's good to have you on here. Um, we are just want to take you back off of where we left off. Um, you wanted to be holistically to help these people that are going through mental issues. Um, you help so much with the mind. You help with the body. Um, so the floor is yours. Tell people what we need to do to make this a better place for our people that are going through. For sure. Um, And again, thank you so much for having me and giving me the opportunity to talk about mental health, not only in sports, um, what I'm, where I'm very passionate about, but just talking about mental health in general. And I think one of the first things is that we really have to normalize the conversations when we talk about mental health and mental illness and really be un- be able to understand what what is meant by that and what it looks like and not have a negative view. I'd like to share the statistic um, that in any given year, one in four people will suffer from a mental illness, and that could be uh, anxiety, depression, alcoholism, or something even more severe. And when we think about one in four people, if you just take a moment and think about that, that is very common. But when we talk about mental health and mental illness, we talk about it as if it's taboo, it's stigma around it. This is something that is, is uh, not common. And that is very far from the truth. The truth is that many most of us struggle with something during our lifetime. And if we could begin to normalize that, we can really engage people to not only to talk about it and address it, but to get help, get the help that they need. So, so when I'm doing my work um, around 
the the uh, sports community, one of the first things I want to do is educate people on what is going on with them. And and just to back up a little bit for for your 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 listeners, um, you know, my name is uh, Natalie Graves, and I have a private practice, uh, Natalie Graves Athletic Counseling, here in the Chicagoland area, where I specialize in working with athletes. And some of the work that I do, I work around the performance piece, helping athletes to achieve their goals. But I also work with the mental health aspect. So if there are issues that are impacting them in their sport, um, we address those things as well. And for me, it is really important that um, not only do I do that work, but I also go um, around the country talking about mental health and sports and trying to educate our communities around this topic because I'm a big believer in fighting the stigma that's attached to mental health, and that is really by beginning to have conversations and honest dialogue with what's going on. Amen, amen. So. Mental health is a big is a big is a big issue. Um, you are on the forefront of the problems that we're running into on a daily basis. Young people are taking their lives on a on a daily basis. Young people are stressed out on a daily basis, and the sports world is as the is a billion dollar industry, and sports medicine is another billion dollar industry, and just the you're dealing with sports in general, the rehab, of uh, trying to get yourself back together and all these type of things and making a ton of money. And um, your practice is a little different because you, you do more than just just working on the actual physical. You work on the spiritual as well. And your concept is different than most other people would, would, would actually do when you think about practicing. Um, now, what is it that we need to do to get this fixed? Because it's this mental illness has become like a a common cold that we're not really addressing. You know, you never, you know, you always see the highlights. You know, young person going to college, um, full ride, then they take it on to the pros. Um, great life. You hear all these great stories, and all of a sudden you hear about a uh, player got mental illness or player got issues in college or player has this kind of situation going on and, you know, why we didn't catch it at an early time. But I believe that, you know, you're going to, you definitely can answer those questions of why we're not catching this situation. Can you tell us why we're not catching it? Yeah, I appreciate that question. And I think when, when we, when I think about what you're asking, I think we have to look at it from, a macro perspective, we have to look at the systems in place, right? We have to look at the organizations, the institutions, the colleges, the universities. And I am a big component of prevention before intervention. So if we do the preventive side, we do things before they happen. When we have to intervene, With an intervention, something has already happened. And what I believe is that there are not enough programming around our athletes. There's Mm -hmm. a program for nutrition. There's discussions Mm -hmm. about sleep. There's discussions about what's the best way to uh, perform particular skills. But we're not talking about the other pieces to an individual, like anger management, how to manage Mm. social media, how do you handle stress, positive and healthy relationships, knowing, you know, for our coaches, knowing some of the signs of depression. So if if Mm. an athlete may be behaving differently or out of the norm, what is the protocol? What do we do? Do we have programs to really encourage teamwork, positivity, sportsmanship, resolution? And these are some of the things when I, when I do work with, with organizations, um, I, I present these type of topics because I think they're so important to 
and an individual. When we look at and we think about an athlete, what are the first things we think about? We think about that they're male. Oftentimes we think that they're black and how they perform. But it is much, I think we need to go much deeper that many athletes are female. Many athletes uh, are, are um, not just athletes who participate in basketball and football. There are athletes that um, are, are white and Latino and Asian, and there are swimmers and ice skaters and hockey players that are athletes just as well. And they all are specialists in what they do. And there's a lot of um, pressure and stress, as you highlighted, um, with these athletes. And there's a lot of expectation that is placed on them by their coach, by their family, by the fans, and by themselves, that they place on Mm. themselves. And if we're not able to handle that, then the the um, adaptive behaviors that one has developed, whether they're healthy or unhealthy, that's what you're going to do. And if you haven't learned how to cope properly, then sometimes and very often we see where the poor choices happen. Uh, mm. uh, maybe uh, off season, you know, you're 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 in a place where you shouldn't be. You know, we hear about that all the time. You know, in Vegas, making bad choices you know, domestic disputes. Well, a lot of this is, if we think about it, is have some of these athletes, have they been taught conflict resolution? Have they Mm. been taught anger management? Have they been taught to be able to express how they feel outside of anger? And Mm. so I think that, you know, as organizations are, are starting to come to terms with they have more of a responsibility than just having a team doctor, right? They're starting to, you know, the NBA is is really starting to make some positive strides as far as their mental wellness program. They just brought, uh, just hired their their, uh, wellness director uh, on. And and as the NBA players have, uh, some of the the known players have, have spoken out on some of their struggles, I think these organizations are starting to realize we have to do more than just concentrate on performance and the physical health. We have to look at the mental and emotional and behavioral health. And that has been, you know, quite honestly, that's been my premise all along in looking at an athlete, not just as a high performer or performer who may be struggling in the cases when they come to see me, but also look at family dynamics. Look at the person as per- personality. How, how are they in other environments? How do they respond to other situations outside of sports? And so we have to look at a holistic picture, and we have to look at it in a micro level when we're looking at the individual athlete, like in my case when I see athletes individually in sessions and therapy. But we also have to look on that micro level, looking at providing um, more services and programs for the organizations that these that that touch these athletes and where these athletes mm-hmm. reside, and and so my hope and my prayer is that more and more uh, professional agencies, colleges, all the way down to youth sports, really began, and and it is happening, but I, I'm I'm really hopeful that this just becomes a norm that you know what, we have an athletic trainer, well, we also have a sports mental health therapist too on our team, and, and we're all on the same team to help the athletes succeed, and that's my hope, and that's really my passion with my practice. Amen. And you're, you're speaking the truth. I think a lot of people are not really saying, well, Calvin, that's, that's too expensive. They don't need no mental doctor on there. Well, let's just, let's just go by the numbers now. The NCAA makes billions of dollars per That's year right. for NF, the, the football, basketball, and baseball. They're big, big, big money makers, huge money makers. But then you got to think about the lacrosses, you know, track and That's field, right. Cal, we ain't thinking about that, those kind of things. Let's leave that alone. Well, let's just, let's just say 
let's talk about the Olympics. Let's think about the doctor who was accused of a molestation, all those young people. The gymnast. That went through. You're, the gymnast. You're referring to, that went, yeah. Did, that went through all the situation. Now, keep in mind now, that happened, and it wasn't addressed. No one said, hey, let's figure out why this child is crying, why this child is going through. You think about the the trust factor. You know, yeah. athletes go through a lot. You know, if you think, well, Calvin can't afford to shoot. You ever went to U, the University of Southern California and go to apply and say, let me hit how much it costs to cost, and it costs about an average student forty to $50,000 a year to go to school. And you think about this is a, a regular student. Let's talk about an af, a person who's got a full ride to school, and they know they can't afford it. Student loan will never go through because mom and dad don't make enough, and most colleges ain't going to take no risk on you and paying it back. So you think about the stress level of playing and performing. You think about a lot of times where you see a lot of young kids, just in youth sports, that stuff is like a – that's another big-time moneymaker where you got a lot of people who take this to a whole other level. Uh, yeah. Where kids are stressing themselves out because I got to win the, the youth championship game, you know, and you fighting for medal that's probably worth $10, maybe 20 at best. <laughs> and you fighting for <laughs> right. a trophy that you're going to die and live for. Um, and you, you think about um, the kids not learning the game. All they're learning about is winning and losing but they're not right. learning the game as a whole, and it's affecting them. And, you know, you need to have a balance. You know, I hear my wife always saying, the kids need a balance, you need to have to have a balance. Always got to have a balance. And my mother was a big, big advocate for a balance. So you can play all the sports yeah. you want, but you're going, you're going to spiritually get yourself together. We're going to talk about this, you know. You know, right. the basketball shot was missed. Okay, move on. Next subject, okay, you got school right. the next day. You know, you, you got the grades to get, you know. We understand this. The shot should have went in. I totally get it. Mama's feeling you. Give me a hug. Let's move on. But there are some kids who the basketball shot that they missed back when they were sixth grade, you know, could have, you know, hurt them emotionally. Because nobody addressed it. No one told the child it's all right. You're not going to go over. People talk about, man, you should have never missed a shot. You're the worst person ever. And they took they took that in for four or five years. And they went in depression state. And the child takes everything super serious. And, and she's talking about where you wonder why some of these players make some dumb decisions with uh, DUI, domestic violence, yeah. um, drug addiction, um, getting in the – the stuff that he shouldn't be getting into. Well, a lot of this stuff could be addressed earlier if you had addressed what the child is going through. You know, I, you know, male and female. You know, the male can be just as emotional as the female, but may not really tell you unless you really get to. They trust you, and uh, I wish people would have to understand that. So I, I'm totally in agreement with you. It's now the great that that, that that we're going to do this. Um, and make it better. Um, so with your practice, and you're you're helping so many people, and you said the NBA is making strides, so shout-out to the NBA um, looking to make a difference. Uh, when you think about, you know, your practice, what is the youngest person you ever had come into your actual office for help? Uh, probably the youngest was or is uh... – 11 or 12. Wow. Um, I've also been, um, uh, little league teams have reached out to me, which I think was actually really excellent because they were really trying to, um, um, instill in, in their players, um, confidence and, uh, leadership and, and team camaraderie. But, um, as it, as it relates to, um, kind of problematic factors, which one would decide, you know, I need to find someone to help my child, probably 11 or 12. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Well, see, ladies and gentlemen, that's just letting you know how, how deep the situation is. She has an 11 or 12-year-old that's coming for help. She's talking about little leaguers. And I know a lot of you saying, Kyle, what are you talking about? Well, if you go on Sports Center and watch the Little League World Series next next month, 
I know mm-hmm. they're watching it myself. It's, it's, these kids are going through now. They, they are. They're on a big stage. But, but, but trust and believe that homer that kid just hit or the strikeout they just struck or, you know, the game they just lost. So they won the whole thing. They didn't win the whole thing. Trust yeah. and believe there's a lot of emotions that are going for them at 11 and 12 just as strongly as a kid on stage in the national championship of college or in the pros when they're playing for either the, either the Super Bowl, the World Series, or the, the NBA championship. All these things you would think, these are all emotions. And we are literally playing for trophies of medals. Some yeah. of it is silver, some of it is gold. But <laughs> gold plated, it, Calvin. It's not even real gold. <laughs> It's not even real gold. Playing for the net, gold plated. You playing for rings? I get it's worth twenty five, thirty thousand dollars, but is it worth your life? You dying over something that you know that you live that you want to play. So, um, with all with all we're doing today, ladies and gentlemen, is just trying to encourage you. Um, if you are going through, child's going through something emotional. Um, if you live in Chicago area, definitely contact her today. I would I would ask you to do so. Um, also, let's get into prayer. You know, go to your local pastor, get some help. Um, if you're feeling bogged down, hey, I'm in agreement with you that God's going to heal you. Um, but I learned this long time ago that um, sports is a help, but it's not it's not supposed to hurt you. Um, you're not supposed to die <laughs> trying to. Uh, you know, play, play a game. game. Play a game. It's play, it, all you doing is play, it's playing a game. I mean, once you learn, it's all said and done. It does settle. Uh, it's just a game. There's nothing to hate, uh, lose over. And uh, once you've learned to master these things, um, you will be great. Um, final thing, how can people get in contact with you? Absolutely. Um, folks can get in contact with me in, in, in a couple of different ways. I'm on all of the social media. Um, my, my Facebook uh, private practice page is Natalie Gray's Athletic Counseling. You can contact me and message me there. Email me. That's at Natalie Gray's L. CSW at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter, Natalie underscore grades one. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm on Instagram and on my Instagram account, it's Natalie grades athletic counselor. Um, so you can find me in, in a lot of different, in different avenues on social media. Uh, I try to be very accessible. Um, I, I tend to gravitate more towards, um, Facebook, um, but you can definitely email me. Um, any of those me- mean uh, methods will work. My website to my my uh, practice is nataliegraves.com. And Calvin, if if you would just allow me a second, you said something mm-hmm. about if people are struggling and to talk to their pastor. I am a, a therapist who is a Christian, and yes, um, I I really um, I have a T-shirt that that I bought from a, a therapist colleague and it's called, it, it reads, you can pray and see a therapist at the same time. And <laughs> I believe in that so strongly as God has um, allowed people to be medical doctors and dentists and athletic trainers and chiropractors. God also allowed me to be a therapist and I'm going to tell you, uh, I ask God to work through me when I'm working with the people that I'm working with. And um, I take the task very seriously. But I, I want your audience to know that there is no shame in if you're struggling emotionally, um, whether whatever you may be going through. It is not because of a lack of faith, excuse me, or that you're not um, safe enough or you're not believing enough. Because we don't say that about cancer, do we? We don't say that about diabetes. But for some reason, things get misconstrued about our walk with the Lord if we have an emotional um, issue or disorder or struggle. And honestly, I believe that that is a pit from, from hell lie. 
because mm-hmm. it stops us from getting the help that we need. And there are people who are qualified to help to address these things. And um, I was just so fortunate to uh, my church to ask me, uh, uh, I think, in April, May, uh, April or May, to, for the first time, come in and talk about mental health in the church. And that was such an honor for my own church to ask me as a professional, someone who grew up in the church, but who was a therapist, to talk about this. And Mm -hmm. I will tell you, Calvin, the saints were so receptive to what I was saying Mm -hmm. about normalizing what they may be experiencing. And, you know, maybe at another time we can talk about, you know, trauma and and go into detail about some of the the uh, disorders that that folks experience. But as Christians, I think we have to do is exactly what that that church says that we can pray and seek help at the same time. And I'm a strong Amen. believer in that. And and if you're seeking help, it is not because there's something wrong with your relationship with the Lord. It is that you are allowing the Lord to, to work in your situation, maybe through someone else. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Amen. Well, we're definitely going to have you next month to talk about trauma. We're not going to leave you I, off because, hey, we want to continue this this particular uh, bond of information. Uh, I, I believe that you're here to educate, to uplift, and to bless those. Definitely, I want to encourage you. Do you mind if we pray for you right now? Yes, thank you so much. No problem. Well, I want to first before I get into prayer, I'm going to declare and decree that your office, your two offices are going to expand, and you're going to bless those that are going through, not yes, just in the church, on the field, but also the ones that are on the street. People that are going through, you're going to see them for who they are, and the Lord's going to touch you to actually minister to them. Thank you. A lot of times, people are not going to be afraid to talk to you like they say, oh, man, I'm too too good to get help. But they're going to talk to you this time. And I believe right now that the Lord is going to touch you in such a way that you're going to expand the kingdom and get people saved in the chair. Oh. Thank you, it's like Jesus. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna bring people close to Jesus in the chair <laughs> as a ministry. <laughs> you come in Thank one you. way, I'm gonna bring you out the other way. That's how it's gonna be. So that's how God's gonna bless you. You're gonna, they gonna come in one way, and you're gonna tell them stuff in parables, but they're actually gonna get their lives changed in the chair. See, a lot of people say you can't mix, you can't mix church and state. Calvin, I totally get that, but you can always give them in parables. I can Calvin, I can decree um, and declare things all day long. I, I I just right have now. to tell you this. Thank you so much for that. And I know that came from the Lord because um, about four years ago, really quickly, I'm sure we're, we're getting out of time. But four years ago, when I was in my addiction studies program, after class, uh, a woman, a classmate of mine who I wasn't really close with, an older woman, came up to me and asked me what I did. And she prophesied, oh, my God, she prophesied to me that very thing that through my practice I would bring athletes to the Lord. And I haven't thought about that in quite some time, and you just brought that back. And that's just so real for me. So I I just want to just just give honor to God. Uh, That was totally unexpected. And I I just just yield and ask God to continue to order my steps and and prepare me and and strengthen me as what I need to be my best to serve him. Thank you so much for that. No problem. Amen. It's one of the Lord leaders. So, Father, we just praise and thank you, Ms. Natalie Graves. We're going to pray for Cole Claus and for Mr. Manny Barnes for coming on to the show, Father. Right now, we want to pray for blessings and favor on their lives. Father, right now, Ms. Natalie Graves right now is coming to you as a humble servant. She's coming to you right now, Father, having a better understanding of who you are. Father, as she's, as people come into the office, Father, their lives, the weight, the yoke is being destroyed, it's being the yes, burden uh-huh. is being removed. Father, their minds are being enlightened. Father, she's going to be the salt of the earth. We pray right now the cold claws of their, their lives and their children. Father, that you open the doors for them right now, that they open them for their books, their foundation. Mr. Emmanuel Barbie, Father, his foundation you have for them, Father. He's blessing yes, right now. Lord. Open the doors for them. Father, right now, I open this now to Christian says, Father, she remembers what you told her. 
So, Father, that the words will not fall on deaf ears. That words will continue, yeah. Father, right now. I'm praying right now that the clan decree this week. Lives are going to be changed. They come into room. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to talk about you, and our, and people are going to change. And we praise you and thank you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hand of God thank you, God. Right now, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Lord. No problem. Amen. I tell you right now, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, it's a separate prayer we're going to pray right now. Lord Jesus, come to my heart. Be Savior, Lord, my life. I know you died on the cross for my sin. And accept you, accept you right now so that you're my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said that prayer, email us to loveandpromotion at gmail.com. I'm telling you right now, Jesus is the reason for who I am today. The Lord put me on this planet for a reason to do his purpose, his will. It's not by house calling lands, by getting people's lives saved and closer to Christ. You just heard three different witnesses and testimonies. Lives have changed. And we pray for that everyone has heard this. And on the rebroadcast, your lives are going to be changed. Go to the Logan Power Show at gmail.com and email us for more information. If you know more about us, go to us at www.loganpowershow.us. You can sow to us, click on the donate. You can see our previous stuff. We want to thank Elations Radio, Miss Kimmy Robinson, the entire Elations family for all their support. I tell you right now, this this time is going to change lives. I pray in the replay. I declare and decree people's lives are being changed right now. I claim on the back of the demonic forces of the end. I yes. tell you right now, this, this will be a blessed time, a blessed season. 2018 is not over with, ladies and gentlemen. We're just in July. We got five more months to go. So get excited about what God is getting ready to do. I'm excited yes. right now. It's all the time I got. My name is Calvin Logan Power Show nationwide, worldwide. We love y'all. We appreciate you. Miss Kimmy Kim, take us out. Thank you all for calling in. All right. You say you feel defeated and you're down for the count. You feel like life has thrown you blows and God ain't been around. But I've come to encourage you to hold your head high. Know that God is in your corner now, no more inner lies. You are a winner, you just can't lose. in you. You are a winner. You are born to win.